Now that we're 25% of the way through the MLS season, about that percentage of managers are in the hot seat. So let's discuss the five MLS coaches at most risk of being sacked in the near future and decide if their club should actually let them go. Starting, of course, with the worst team in the league in Sporting Kansas City and their manager, Peter Vermees, and it has been a terrible start for SKC, who have zero wins throughout their first nine matches. And while conceding 13 goals in those matches isn't great, the issue is simply that SKC cannot score. They are setting records by only scoring three goals through their first nine matches, and those are obviously not good records. The craziest part, though, is that Peter Vermees actually signed a five-year extension only two months ago. I mean, seriously, what were SKC thinking here? And it's not as if they were good last year. They finished 12th in the West last year. So we're starting off with an easy one, and hopefully Peter Vermees, with his history, won't make it too expensive. But SKC, you have got to sack him now. Now over to a team that was good last year in Austin FC and their manager, Josh Wolf. They, of course, went from second in the West last season to now 11th in the West currently at the moment. But that isn't their biggest embarrassment because they were also upset in the biggest upset in CONCACAF Champions League history in the round of 16 by Haitian side Violet. And that was just unheard of. Josh Wolf's contract extends through the end of 2025 after he signed a three-year extension at the beginning of 2022. At the time, that looked a very curious decision from Austin FC, who had finished 12th in the West in their first year in the league. But of course, that looked like a good decision after the 2022 season when they took a major upswing into second place. So that is why I believe that although they are winless in their last five games, this is a manager that needs to stay. They will have ups and downs, but ultimately Josh Wolf is the best manager for Austin FC. Hey, if you're looking for MLS content on YouTube, this is the channel for you. So hit that subscribe button and join the Upper 90 community. All right, back to the video. Heading over to the Eastern Conference and New York Red Bulls, who were many people's preseason supporter shield picks, but they have absolutely flopped thus far. They're currently sitting 13th in the East, winless in their last five matches, and they have issues that extend well beyond the pitch. Their brand new designated player, Dante Vanger, was of course suspended six games for using racist language on the pitch, and that is obviously a punishment that simply was not severe enough. A six-game punishment is not zero tolerance, so that should have been way more. But the point is, is that Garrett Struber was also involved in this mess because he didn't sub off Dante Van Gier despite knowing the allegations against his player in the game against San Jose. And this is why, despite my belief that Struber is a quality tactician, I believe that he must be sacked. The on and off the field issues are too much for New York Red Bulls and the locker room is in chaos and a new manager is simply needed to bring in to sort it out. As I said, he's a good tactician, but I do believe there are lots of quality managers that can fit the Gagan pressing style of New York Red Bulls. Heck, they let a good one in Bradley Carnell go to St. Louis. They should have just kept him. Then on to the most star-studded team on this list, Bob Bradley and Toronto FC, and Bob, of course, is the general manager as well. He has built an incredible team with those Italian stars of Bernadeschi and Insigne. He's brought in help defensively with Matt Hedges and Sean Johnson, and injuries have obviously hurt them, especially with Insigne and their new striker, Diomande, but there's no real confidence that that's going to change anytime soon. And so while they sit 12th in the East at the moment, they've actually only lost two games all season. They've had a lot of draws. They've had two of those draws against Atlanta. They've had another against Columbus and Nashville, which are all really good results when you think about it. And winning obviously has been difficult, but for this reason, as well as the fact that it isn't simple to sack a coach who is also your general manager, I think the answer with Bob Bradley here is to wait it out. 
Basically, what I'm saying is that it's too early to decide. He may be able to turn those draws into wins, in which case he should obviously keep his job. On the other side of the coin, those draws may turn into losses, in which case he'll have to go. For me, though, you have to wait for one of those two things to happen before making a rash decision about the guy who basically runs your entire football club. Last on this list is Inter Miami and their coach Phil Neville who got off to a great start in 2023 with 2-0 wins over Montreal and Philadelphia. It looked like Miami might actually be competitive after finally making the playoffs for the first time in their history last season. Unfortunately though, they've lost every single game since and their schedule is only getting harder. I genuinely think that last season was a fluke for Miami to even make the playoffs. That's what happens with the parity in MLS. Some teams make it when they shouldn't and others don't when they should. But Phil Neville throughout his time in MLS has shown that the Neville family is just inept coaches, whether it's him or his brother. And so he simply needs to be sacked. He's not a good coach. As to who is the next best coach for Inter Miami, I'm not really sure, but if I were David Beckham, I would get Lionel Messi on the phone and ask him who he'd like. So do you agree with me and who I think needs to be sacked and who I think needs to stay? Or do you actually think that there are other managers not listed that might need to be sacked? Because there are, of course, a lot of managers under fire in the league. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like and subscription and comment what you think so that we can help grow this channel together. It really, really helps. Thank you so much and see you next time.